desperately insecure or we're struggling. We can often look like we're strong, but the truth of the matter is we feel weak. We can put on happy face at church, praise the Lord, bless you God, all this kind of stuff, you know, hashtag blessed, here's my Instagram self, but oftentimes, truthfully, we go home, we feel anxious, we feel worried, we feel a weight, we feel angst, there's a heaviness, there's an insecurity, there's a fear, there's a dread. What do we do when we find ourselves battling with anxiety? Well, our text that's driving us through this message series is Philippians chapter four. I wanna read it to you again today, and I wanna remind you as we experience the power of God's word, that this was the Apostle Paul writing, inspired by the Holy Spirit to his friends in Philippi, but he was writing from a Roman prison. He was chained up 24 hours a day to Roman guards, and he was awaiting trial. He didn't know what was gonna happen to him. If there was anyone anywhere who had the right to be anxious, it was the Apostle Paul and what he was going through. And under that type of duress, here's the words of power, life, and truth that he penned. He said this. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Remember last week, the Lord is near. Why does the Lord whisper? He whispers because he's close. The Lord is near. Then the Apostle Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. Another translation says, be anxious for nothing. Do not be anxious about anything, but in what? Let's say it aloud to all of our church. He said, but in every situation, no matter what you're facing, if you're worried about your job, if you're worried about the economy, if your teenagers are freaking you out, no matter what you're going through, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, here's what we do. We present our requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In every situation, by prayer and petition, we present our requests to God. And so let's do that today. Father, I ask that the power of your word and the presence of your spirit would build our faith today. God, for those who are anxious, would you send your peace? We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. What is anxiety? What's anxiety? The answer is very, very complicated. There's no easy answer. Anxiety can be physiological. It can be emotional. It can be situational. I would argue it's always spiritual. Because anxiety is very complicated, we're going to take a holistic approach always to anxiety. In other words, we're always going to pray. We also may seek professional help. We may go to a doctor. We may get advice about uh, supplements or about our diet. We may, under professional care, take certain medicine. We may seek counseling, which is something that I'm doing right now for anxiety in my life, we're always gonna take a holistic approach. For the sake of this time together, I wanna focus wholly and completely on the spiritual side because I cannot prescribe medicine to you, nor would you want me to prescribe medicine to you, but I can offer spiritual prescription that I hope will be helpful. Are we clear? We're gonna be holistic, but today we're talking very, very pointed toward spiritual. What is anxiety? I'll try to explain it this way. How many of you ever had one of those annoying red lights come on your car that indicates there's trouble? Any of you have that? That gives me anxiety anytime the check engine light comes on. What is the check engine light? The check engine light is not the problem. The check engine light signals that there's a problem somewhere else. The signal indicates that if you're smart, you should take the car to the manufacturer, take it to the one who made it, because the one who created it is the one who knows how to fix it. The light is not the problem, the light is a signal indicating you should take it to someone who knows how to address the situation. What is anxiety? Among many things, anxiety is a signal 
alerting you that it's time to pray. Let me say it again. It's the signal, it's the alert, it's the indicator that something else is not right, that you would be wise to go to the manufacturer, go to your creator, go to the one who made you. Anxiety is a signal alerting you that it's time to pray. In other words, if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. If it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. Be anxious about nothing, but in every situation, take your request to God. If you're worried about your upcoming doctor's appointment, pray about it. If you're worried about a decision that you need to make, pray about it. If you're worried about going back to school, who's gonna be in my class? What teacher am I gonna get? Are the kids gonna be nice to me? Pray about it. If you're worried about your kid going back to class because you don't know how you're gonna afford the scientific calculator that costs the same as a used Honda Civic, pray about it. <laughs> if it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. Take your request to God. Here's something I, I've learned as, after being a pastor. I used to just say pray, and then I recognized that a lot of people honestly just don't know how to pray. They're, they're kind of wonder, like, what are the prayer rules? You know, how do I address God? Is he like the omnipotent creator? Is he daddy? I mean, how, how, what do I call him? Do I, do I have to pray in like King James language or it doesn't count? How do I sign off? Do I say in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Does he get mad if I don't? What if I fall asleep praying? Have I offended God and I'm in prayer time out for the next seven weeks, he won't listen to my prayer? What are the prayer rules? You have to pray in King James language. <laughs> Hearken unto the voice of my cry, O God, hide not thyself from my supplication. You don't have to do that. You don't have to pray to a relational God who loves you in a formal language, he loves you. It can be intimidating, honestly. I don't know if any of you have ever been around like prayer ninjas, people with like the spiritual gift of prayer, like they pray and God goes like, dude, that was good. <laughs> Whoa, hey, yeah, years, that sucks. That was a good prayer. You know, I mean, they like they, they they quote scripture, you know, like, you know, like in the, and they know where it is in the Bible, you know, stuff like and they can find the book in the Bible, you know, like God, you said in Isaiah 54, 17, you know, no weapon formed against me will prosper. You're like, ooh, that's good. I remember when I was a brand new Christian trying to do that. There was just one guy, he was like so powerful and eloquent. And so I was trying, like I was like, I was like God, you know, you're so good. Yes, you're so good. You're, you're good to the last drop, God. You're, you're like a good neighbor. You'll always be there. Now, I didn't know how to do it, but with everything in me, I was trying, like, here's a good prayer, God. How do you, how do you pray? Listen to what Scripture says. And I want to give you a little insight to what Paul said. He said this. He said, he said, Pray about everything. God cares about it. He said, present your requests to God. I don't love that translation. There's, there's different ways. The, this text is written in Greek, and so scholars determine, here's the best way I think it should be translated. That's why there's different versions of the Bible, there's different translations. In my opinion, that's a little bit more formal than what the text is saying. What the text really is saying is this, how do you pray? The, the, the text is saying, let your needs be known. That's what it's saying. It's present your request to God. It's let your needs be known. How, how do we do that? It's very simple. You, get ready for it. Let your needs be known. You talk to God in your way. In other words, it doesn't have to be in my way. It doesn't have to be in prayer ninja's way. It's just in your way. For example, we have six kids. If you're new here, you must say, You'll, you must really love kids. Eh, they're okay. <laughs> I really love their mama, and all God's people said, <laughs> my kids hate that joke, but they know I really love them. And here's what's interesting. They all let their needs be known to me in their own creative and unique ways. They're all very different in how they let their needs be known. I'm going to introduce them to you via um, photos. 
and I'm going to tell you how they let their needs be known. My oldest daughter, Katie, she lets her needs be known on texts. She'll text me whatever she needs, and the texts are short, they're direct, they're to the point, and they're always very loving. Mandy doesn't text her needs, she calls. And the average Mandy call lasts about 43 minutes. <laughs> She's a talker. Then there's Sam, and, uh, no, sorry, there's Anna next. There's six of them, they're hard to keep straight. <laughs> you, whatever your name is, stop that, okay? There's Anna. Um, Anna recently got married. Anna presents and brings data and flip charts and proves her case and won't let anyone back out. Then there's Sam. Sam waits until 10.30 at night, comes into our bedroom to talk for a long period of time, which honestly, that's not the ideal time to come into our bedroom because often we are planning some very intense prayer time. <laughs> then there's Stephen, and what he does is he's like a little attorney. He's smarter than anybody in the room. He's three moves ahead of me. He's already got his defense, and he wins when he walks in the room. Then there's Joy. Joy will ask, text, call, come into the room, sing, shout, <laughs> beg. She never surrenders, and she gets what she wants because she's the baby of the family and everybody's favorite. Just ask her, and she will tell you, okay? <laughs> they're all creative, and they're all unique, and that's how you can talk to God. You can ask him, you can write your prayer request to him, you can sing your prayer request to him, you can sigh, he knows your heart. <sighs> you can shout with joy, you can shout with anger. Believe me, he's big enough to handle your temper tantrum. <laughs> and here's what I want you to know. I'm a, a dad and as, a, as an earthly father, I actually like when my children need me. Don't tell them I said that, but I do. I want to be needed, and God, who loves you as your heavenly Father, loves for you to come to him and let your needs be known. In every situation, with prayer and petition, let your needs be known to God. What is anxiety? It's a signal alerting you to go to the one who loves you. Go to the one who created you. Go to the one who can help you. It's a signal alerting you. It's time to pray. I love the way that Peter talked about how to handle anxiety. Peter is a guy that probably did have anxiety if you looked at the way he lived his life. And this is what he said to do when you're anxious. He said in 1 Peter 5, verse six and seven, he said, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, focus on the hand, we're gonna come back to this, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Then he said, cast all your anxiety. Do you feel anxious? Do you feel a weight? Do you feel afraid? We're gonna approach it holistically, but we're always going to take it to God, and we're gonna cast our anxiety on him because he cares for us. What do you do? You humble yourselves, and you pray. This is what I've been doing more than you can imagine. If you were here with us last week, I got kind of open with you, and I really appreciate you not freaking out and leaving the church and running out and going, our pastors and counseling. Yes, your pastors and counseling. I've been, been battling with unusual anxiety. This is not normal for me, but it's been real enough to get help. Um, the doctor I'm working with is a performance psychologist, and so he's helping me not just like just look within, but to perform at a higher level, and it's, it's incredibly helpful. Um, here's what I've been going through. I'm just gonna kinda unpack it for you, and when I'm gonna tell you this, it's not to complain, and it's not to say my world is any more difficult than anyone else's. Everybody's got their stuff. Let me say it again. Everybody's got their stuff, right? We all do, we all do. My world's not harder, it's just different. What I'm gonna tell you is I'm not bragging, I'm not complaining, this is just what's been giving me this anxiety to the point where I have a hard time breathing and I'm not functioning the way that I want to. Um, over the next two months, I have um, 16 or 17 messages 
to write and preach, and they're all new. That's not easy, okay? The, it's, you gotta be creative. Every time I read the Bible, David always beats Goliath. Every time. <laughs> Christmas is the virgin, Easter is an empty tomb. You gotta be creative, and, and it's, it, it, it's like, can we change it? No, we can't change it. So every year, and, and to, just to give you insight into my world, it takes me from start to finish, from concept to research to digging into the text to illustrating to personalizing to checking with other people to make sure I'm not omitting a group of people to finalizing to internalizing. It's about a 12 to 16 hour process. Sometime it will drift up to 20 hours. So I've got about 16 messages. I'll show you, this is my board. I always keep this board for two months ahead. So you'll see Anxious One, Anxious Two, Anxious Three, and then the Global Leadership Summit, I did the opening and closing talk. Just to help you feel the pressure, it's translated into 60 languages and goes to about 450,000 people. Yeah, I feel the pressure. There's, this week there's all staff, then there's a September series and the conferences and such. Um, and so I've got about 22 days worth of study time that I need in the next two months, and I have only 11 on the calendar because contrary to popular belief, pastors actually do more than just preach on Sunday. <laughs> just saying, okay? So I have, I have what is, according to my schedule, an impossible situation, meaning that doesn't work. So what I've been doing now for the last year or so is I've been cheating earlier and later, meaning kids go to bed, I work until late, or I get up and Amy will tell you she's not happy about it, and it's not sustainable, but I will be in the office oftentimes at 3.30 or 4 a.m. in the morning because that's what, it, that's what it takes. That's not good. Anxiety. Too much. Pressure. Here's how I'm dealing with it. I am a tither. I'm a tither. What I believe with all of my heart is that God owns everything but everything that he gives me, the first 10% is devoted to him. If I worship him with the first 10% of what he gives to me, scripture says that he blesses the rest and pours out blessings on me in ways of provision and not just monetarily, but in all sorts of ways. So for all 28 years of our marriage, we've always put the first 10% toward God and believe that he would bless the rest. I'm taking that principle according to help with my counselor and I'm applying it to preaching, which is I don't have time to spend a lot of time in prayer. When I get up in the morning, I speed in, I take two steps at a time. I'm telling you, every minute of my day counts. If I'm on an airplane, you might be watching a movie, I'm working on a sermon, every minute counts. I'm now tithing time in prayer. Meaning, instead of working longer, I'm praying longer when I don't feel like I have the time, believing that if I'll prepare my heart, God will help prepare the message. <laughs> the message that you're hearing right now has about five hours less time than a normal message. My hope is that you don't say, well, it shows, Pastor, get up at two in the morning. You know, I hope that that doesn't, doesn't show because in my heart what I'm saying is rather than working harder, I'm going to believe more. Rather than trying to produce my way through it, I'm gonna pray my way through it. I'm gonna tithe this time and I'm gonna trust God to be my provision. I'm gonna pray about everything. I don't know how this would apply to you, but whenever there's anxiety, it's a signal alerting you. It's time to go to the one who cares about you. It's time to seek God in prayer. Do you feel down? Do you feel depleted? Do you feel like there's too much and you're sinking? Peter said, humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand, I love this imagery, that he might lift you up. That will mean so much more to you if you recognize who was writing this. Peter was writing this. Peter was the one who was in a boat with all the other disciples and had the audacity to believe that he could get out of the boat and walk toward Jesus on water, which he did. He's walking on water, 
And when he saw the wind and the waves, the anxiety took over. He took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink. And then what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't say, you no good, faithless guy. No, Jesus reached out his hand. Humble yourselves under his mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time when you go before God in prayer. If you're sinking, perhaps the problem isn't that you're sinking. The problem isn't that you're re- they're not reaching out to his hand that is there for you. If you reach out to him, reach out to him, he will lift you up in due time. In fact, here's a little, uh, a little um, secret to where we're going. At the end of this message, we're going to sing a song. It's about three minutes long, which cuts three minutes off my message, which actually helps me prepare less. Okay. And when we sing, I'm actually going to have you reach up a hand or two. And you may say, that's not my style. You've done it somewhere. You've been at a concert, you've been at a game. Ah! You can do it one time. I'm gonna push you just a little bit. What do lifted hands symbolize? Well, they symbolize victory and or they symbolize surrender. In this case, I believe that they will symbolize both at the same time. The moment that we surrender, we will experience a victory that God is with us, that he cares for us, that he's comforting us, that he's strengthening us, that he is with us. What do we need to do? If you're battling with anxiety, there is a cycle. There's always a cycle. The cycle looks like this. What do you do? You feel anxious, you feel a weight, you feel an angst, you feel a dread, you feel worried. So you try to do what I try to do, you try to take control. I'll make this happen, I'll get her into shape, I'll I'll fix him, I'll control that. You try to take control. The problem is the more we try to control, the more we fear losing control, And the more we fear losing control, the more we try to control, and the more we try to control, the more anxiety we start to feel. What do we need to do? When we start to enter into the anxiety cycle, we need to break the cycle. We need to shatter the cycle. How do we break the cycle? We recognize this truth, internalize it, embrace it, live it, let it sink into your soul, let it heal your mind, let it bring comfort to you. What do we do? We recognize the truth that you don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. You always, you can't fix everything. You can't change everything. Medicine won't always fix it. Counseling won't always fix it. Changing of circumstances won't always fix it. We can't always fix everything, but we can surrender anything that is a burden to our God. We can take it to 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 God. In fact, if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna change microphones because I'm gonna ask the band to come up and I need some help getting over the band because the band's gonna be really, really good today. At all of our different churches at this moment, would you just stand to your feet, every Life Church location? I want you to prepare to take what is weighing on you and just in the only way you know how, let your needs be known to God. Present your request to God. What are we going to do? We're gonna humble ourselves. Listen to me, I need help. Your pastor needs help. I'm seeking help, I'm going to God for help. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 
cast all your anxiety